Hello, this is Joanne of Kaduna reporting for DT on hashtag Sustainable Sunday. This video is going to be talking about hauls and Nigerian influencers and your obsession with this hauls. Disclaimer before I start, this is no, this is not an attack to any Nigerian fashion or lifestyle influencer. This is just me using my own platform to help educate people and for us to know more about issues especially as regards to sustainability and especially as regards to su environmental sustainability i am just a messenger i'm a lover not a hater <laughs> almost every influencer in the fashion or lifestyle space always get to do a haul it's like part of their content pillars i think and most influencers do things and most influencers actually do things based on what their followers, their subscribers, or their community likes. So they do these things in reflection of what their communities are going to enjoy and feed on. And well, it's also an avenue for them to make money. So this is a no judgment zone. I don't have any issue with a lifestyle or a fashion influencer showing us clothes that they love or showing us ways to make our clothes work for us showing us ways to style ourselves fashion influencers and lifestyle influencers have helped a whole lot of us to know how to work with our wardrobe and that is very great but my problem is the huge and recent obsession with fast fashion hauls now first of what is fast fashion fast fashion as the name entails is fashion that is fast that means um making you clothes at the shortest time possible at the cheapest prices ever that you can think of and making you the trendiest designs like they make the trendy designs come out like yesterday and they get it to you as your doorstep like tomorrow and the price is just a fraction of what you have seen in other brands but why is fast fashion and then Examples of fast fashion brands include Zara, Pretty Little Thing, Fashion Nova, H&M, Asos, and the most popular these days, Shein. And now why is fast fashion bad? The only reason why you're able to get those clothes at those type of prices and being delivered to you at the shortest time possible, like I've watched a lot of these whole videos research for this in research for this video and I realized that a lot of them a lot of these influencers talk about how their other got to them within five to fifteen working days and most experience for sharing is like five to ten working days. Some of these brands with just a little shipping fee, some of the brands with free shipping as long as you spend more, the shipping is free. The only reason why you're able to get these clothes at the type of prices you get them for and at the shortest shipping time possible with almost no shipping fee or even free shipping is because your clothes are either made by children or women with poor working conditions some of those women and children that make your clothes are sexually abused they are being raped and they are being paid within seventeen thousand to 30,000 naira per month. Even as a Nigerian, you know that anybody living within 16 to 30,000 naira per month is almost not living. We in Nigeria can be able to relate because we are also a developing country and we, are, and we know how labor is cheap. So these big brands actually capitalize on that and go to these like developing countries to exploit them. And because you know that they have poor labor laws they exploit them and you don't just care let's take for example in 2013 in the in bangladesh a plaza rana plaza collapsed killing 1132 people and 2500 people were injured now this plaza housed five garment factories that produced clothes for in the children's place primark walmart zara and up to now, little or nothing has been done as regards to the working conditions for most of these fast fashion brands. They feed on exploiting the people that make your clothes 
to get money from you and they enrich themselves without actually investigating the working conditions and the facilities that these people that make your clothes actually go through. Now let's remove exploitation of labor in one side. Fast fashion, fast fashion companies also contribute to environmental pollution. 60% of the fabric fibers that are used to make the fabrics that they make your clothes are made from synthetic fibers that are gotten from fossil fuels. So that means that most of the clothes that you buy, when you're done with them, when they are done and used, they cannot degrade. They just fill up a land space. They don't degrade, causing pollution. It's as it's according to reports, just like how archaeologists um, hundreds of years later are finding huge um treasures under the ground in like 100 to 150 in like 100 years from now if archaeologists are going to be finding zara and pretty little thing and sharing clothes under the ground like 100 years from now because of the type of materials that are being used to make this clothes also some of this and also production of some of these clothes actually lead to pollution of our water as the groundwater is actually polluted during the cause of production of these clothes. Groundwater is where a lot of our drinking water and the water that we use to farm come from. And we are gradually polluting that. And we are, and we are gradually polluting that to make clothes that are not even of the greatest quality. I watch a lot of this whole, and some of these influencers mentioned that maybe a, a top or a dress that they saw online, how the expectation when they saw it, when the expectation when it got to them was not giving what they expected it to be given. It was almost a situation of what I ordered versus what arrived. And clothes are not made to last because they want you to get hooked on trend. They want you to be on the trend mill, on the fashion trend mill, chasing after each and every trend as it comes out, whereas sucking out money from your pocket when you actually think you're making good financial decisions. Most of this, uh, a lot of these fast fashion brands steal designs from local designers, local indigenous brands, and, and mass produce them. And they don't, even when they are reprimanded for it, they do nothing to little about it. And instead, they bully these local, instead, they bully these small local designers into silence. Now that you know why fast fashion is bad, I have a case for the Nigerian influencers and why I feel, feel that they have no choice. Nigeria is also a developing country and the economy these days is not friendly. And for a lot of people, especially young people, their pockets are not that deep. Most of the local Nigerian designers that we have around, their prices are way above a lot of people's pay grade. Most of these, um, most of these local designers have clothes that go from like 10,000 naira, 20, 30, 40,000 naira for a piece of clothing. A lot of Nigerians, especially young Nigerians, cannot afford that. And so these fashion influencers are looking for ways that their audiences can be able to look good for a fraction of what it could have originally cost. And that is great. So they are looking for cheaper options and cheaper alternatives for their audiences. And that is why they do what they do. Also, so some brands do not have like large sizing options, even in Nigeria, where a lot of Nigerian people are not like the standard sizes. You still have a lot of brands that do not cater to bigger sized women or men. And so they have to go for other alternatives where, where these fast fashion brands actually have bigger alternatives. But in as much as these influencers are trying to look for ways that their community or their subscribers or their followers will feel included and feel empowered, to dressing right and the trendiest clothes at the snap of their finger. Still, I have a problem with influencers that encourage overconsumption. Now, I went through a lot of Nigerian influencers, especially in the YouTube space. I went through a lot of their fashion haul videos and I went through even a lot of their pages for like a one year period. And I realized there were few, some of them that they just had hauls like once in a while. It was like a once in six month thing, once in a year thing. And even when they did these hauls, they did they they were reasonable 
kind of hauls for some of them it was just like five pieces of clothing six pieces of clothing you could actually see that the clothing or whatever they were getting from this fashion fashion brand the things that they actually needed and it was something they could readily afford and that was great i understood with those kind of influencers but i had a problem with also with some other influencers that we are doing hauls every month from this fast fashion brands some we're mixing them with local indigenous brands and still even with the local indigenous brands they were doing just like two pieces three pieces just thing to just show you that you can you can actually dress good and they also try to make you work with whatever they had bought and show you ways that you could style them to make them look like 20 outfits in one and that was great for those type of, and that was great i actually learned a lot from those kind of influencers but also i had influencers i saw influencers that every month they had a fashion haul video and every month they had a huge box of clothes to have a haul from they were showing us clothes every month from shane pretty little thing zara fashion nova every month every month every month i have no problem with how you spend your money it is your money no one has a problem but maybe sometimes we when we do some things we don't actually know the repercussion of the things we do and that's just what i'm trying to do now when you shop every month and you're showing us huge boxes of clothes every month and every month every month in a world that is greatly influenced by what they see on the internet we are going to continually be you're going to have a lot of your followers or subscribers or community members that are also going to be itching to have to do huge hauls of clothes every month that they do not need if i have to buy a box of clothes every month in a year then i may not have to buy clothes for like five years or ten to me you are encouraging over consumption which we do not need the resources that are used to make even just one cloth no matter how cheap it is is still resources that have been wasted if you buy clothes that you're not going to use for a long period of time and you might say well you're going to give them out but you're putting money in the wrong people's pockets you're putting money in the pockets of the people that are continually polluting our environment and even if you might say well it happens far away from nigeria it happens in bangladesh india china it's not happening in nigeria those products the production of those clothes are not happening back here in nigeria but still, climate change does not decide which part of the world is going to affect. Now, Africa only contributes to 4% of carbon emissions, but we are the continents that are going to be the worst hit from climate change impact, from climate impact. We're already experiencing it, irregular rainfall, cost of food rising every day, farmer headers clashes, droughts in some countries flooding over like over flooding flooding in some countries in, the inconsistent um rainfall is affecting production of food in some countries so the actions of those people that you're putting more money in their pocket is actually affecting you back home but you do not know it and i do not i do not have um I cannot decide where you spend your money, whether you spend your money in Nigeria or you spend money outside Nigeria. But spending your money in Nigeria or with Nigerian brands that you actually can trust. Because if you can afford to be buying boxes and boxes of clothes every month, then you can afford to actually patronize a lot of Nigerian designers. And from what I've heard and researched, Shein and some of these fast fashion companies don't actually even put you on their influencer list or pay you to make some of these videos. So you're just carrying your money and dashing them. They're not interested in putting you on their influencers list or something. So why don't you just look for people that will actually even appreciate you and appreciate the work that you do. Not that I'm saying that even the Nigerian designers are saying to, for sure we still have <laughs> a lot of bad eggs here. But we can be, we can actually, you can use your influence to better and more profitable use just say so dear nigerian influencers fashion influencers lifestyle influencers you guys are doing the work and continually showcasing that you are creative in your own way truly use your voices and the platform that you have to fight for things to be right 
to make changes within the fashion industry, whether in Nigeria or outside of Nigeria, your voices can be heard. It should be all about coming to wear new cloth walls every day. It should also be about trying to show change, even as you're wearing that cloth that you're doing, you're wearing, you can be a social activist using these platforms that you've gotten, preach conscious consumption, preach ethical production, preach um, humane living standards for workers and try to also push for the rights of workers in ways that you can, in little ways that you can. You might not think that you can do it, but you actually can and you have the influence to be able to do this. And I, as I said earlier, I'm just a messenger. I'm not here to bash anyone and I'm trying to be as understanding as I can. But we can also do better. So if you watch this video up to now, thank you very much for watching. You're doing well. Please subscribe, like and share so that this gospel can reach all the ends of the earth. Until my very next video, remember that you can be the change that you want to see. Until next time, Joanne of Kaduna. Signing out.